So let's understand what is signal to noise ratio. In the first part of this video series, we learnt about the Taguchi's quality loss function, which states that as the process mean deviates from the target, there is loss to the customer. This loss increases if there is high variance in the process. So from an objective point of view, Taguchi's design aim at minimizing the variance while keeping the mean on target. The objective of variation reduction while maintaining mean at the target is achieved by optimizing the signal to noise ratio. We did introduce the term signal in the first part of this video series, but to understand the role it plays during experimentation, let's look at the same car acceleration example once again. So the objective of our robust design experiment is to improve the smoothness with which a car accelerates. So the speed of the car is a response variable which we have to improve and then one of the key dependent factors would be the behavior of the accelerator pedal. The degree of depression of the pedal will definitely impact the car speed but while in use the usage pattern of this pedal will highly vary. It will depend on the style, the mood, the intent of the driver. These different characteristics will influence how the car accelerates but can never be predicted during the design phase. So when we are designing a robust process, our effort is to ensure that the speeding process will not be affected negatively by the way the pedal is used. So during experiments, we take this factor as a signal factor and repeat each experimental run for every signal level. So signal here refers to that primary input factor whose relationship with the quality characteristics of the output response is very critical to find in the experiments. From a representation point of view, the first curve has the highest signal to noise ratio. This ratio has the minimum variance as well. While the third signal to noise ratio is the worst of these three. In static designs, we normally come across three scenarios for the signal to noise ratio. First is when we strive to determine a fixed optimal value for the response. That is, this fixed specific value is the most desirable response level. Like the example of depositing a fixed layer of uh, silicon on the silicon papers. In this case, the signal to noise ratio is given by 10 times log 10 of the ratio between square of the signal mean and square of sigma, which is standard deviation. This would be the formula that you or if you use a software will use to find the signal to noise ratio in nominal the best scenario. Some of you may be interested to know how this formula is getting derived. So let's quickly have a look at this. So we remember from the first part of this video series that the quality loss QA is proportional to the square of the deviation of mean from the target plus the variance. Here our objective is to move the mean to the target or we can say that ultimately we want the mean to be equating to target. This is achieved by adjusting the terms in the equation to t by mu times. So the new equation can be written as qa equals k times mu into t by mu minus t whole square plus sigma into t by mu whole square. So if we solve this equation, we get qa equals k times, the first part becomes 0. 
so we are left with uh, sigma t by mu whole square and if we take this t out this becomes t square and we are left with sigma by mu whole square this uh, k into t square can be replaced with a new constant k prime into sigma by mu whole square now ultimately our aim is to maximize the quality or we can say that the quality loss QA should be minimized. So if QA has to be minimized, we can say that 1 by QA needs to be maximized. So we can rewrite the same equation as 1 by QA equals 1 by K prime multiplied by mu by sigma whole square. Now in this equation, mu is the mean value of the signal and sigma is the variation in uh, the signal due to the noise factors. So when we maximize 1 by uh, QA, this maximization shall lead us to an optimum signal to noise ratio. But here we may face a practical issue given the number of factors we normally encounter in Taguchi's uh, designs, uh, calculations can become a little difficult. So this reason plus since we want to improve the linearity in Taguchi's uh, designs, we take a log and convert the formula which now can be written as signal to noise ratio given by log base 10 mu square by sigma square. Now we also need to know that this concept has got uh, evolved in the electric uh, circuit theory where uh, it's a very common practice to use bells as a unit. That's how the formula was originally uh, derived as well. Hence, to change from bells to decibels and to make uh, certain uh, sampling adjustments, we multiply this formula by 10 yields. So, finally the equation becomes signal to noise ratio given by 10 times log base 10 mu square by sigma square. So I hope this makes it clear as in how this formula came into use. Uh, now getting back to the ratios, second scenario in the static designs is when larger the response factor, it is better for the process like uh, quality, efficiency, reliability. What it means in this case is that when we maximize the signal to noise ratio in a case where higher is better. It means that for a higher value of the signal factor, design would be more robust and the impact of the noise factors on input control factors and variability in the response would be minimum. In this case, the signal to noise ratio is proportional to the mean standard deviation, which is minus 10 times the log 10 of 1 by n times the sum of 1 by mu square terms in the experiment. Here n is the number of trials. And coming to the third scenario in the static designs, it is a case where smaller the response it is better for the process, like in case of cost. Since this is a reverse representation of the second scenario, the formula is similar but in place of 1 by mu square we use mu square. So these are the three signal to noise ratios which are used to reduce the variance in a static Taguchi model.